Green Llama Strikes for Justice. Time now for another exciting adventure taken directly from the files of Jethro Dumont. Jethro Dumont, the wealthy young American who after ten years in Tibet returned as the Green Llama to amaze the world with his curious and secret powers in his single-handed fight against injustice and crime. I am Turku, whose honor and pleasure it is to serve the Green Lama. Jethro Dumont, the Green Lama, is so called because of his great wisdom and powers of concentration which he learned while visiting my country, Tibet. As it is the duty of all lamas to oppose evil, Jethro Dumont returned to his native America to fight crime. Of the six sacred colors of Tibet, he chose green, which is the symbol of justice. The story of the million-dollar chopsticks began as a ship nestled against a pier in Hong Kong. Aboard the ship was the Green Lama, who had been summoned to Hong Kong by a friend in great trouble. The Green Lama was standing at the gangplank, talking to the captain of the ship. Hello, Mr. Dumont, sir. Van Harbour. I hope you enjoyed your voyage. It is a troubled place you've come to. Captain Jensen, it is written that a man may find trouble everywhere if he does not find peace within himself. Yeah, well, I never was much for problems, Mr. Dumont. I, I, I suppose you're right. Still, Hong Kong is filled with thieves, murderers, cutthroats, and the scum of the seven seas. You mean the refugees from North China? Uh, some call them that. North China, Mr. Dumont, is filled with looters. They're bringing into Hong Kong everything of value that can be carried. Every thief of the Far East is here. And everyone else is becoming a thief. Everyone, Captain Jensen? Oh, Madam Ming, I didn't see you. Forgive me. It is quite all right, Captain. I came to meet your honored passenger, the Green Lama. I, uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Dumont, this lovely lady is Madam Jade Ming. Uh, Madam, Mr. Jethro Dumont. I'm delighted, Madam Ming. No more than I, or uh, Lama. If you two will please excuse me. Certainly. Even in China, or perhaps I should say especially in China, the news of the deed of the Green Lama has reached my ear. Oh? Uh, Mr. Dumont, this is my servant, Yen Fu. Yen Fu? Madam Jade Ming... Yours is a most interesting name. My father, Ming Qing Huang, named me Ming Yu, but I have anglicized the name. Ming Yu, yes, of course. Yu is the word for both jade and for the five cardinal virtues. <laughs> but your father must have been an admirer of Xiang Yong So. Oh, yes, he was. But what made you think so? Looking at you, I'm sure that your father, in naming you Jade, was thinking of the remark of Xiang Yong So. The magic powers of heaven and earth are ever combined to form perfect results. <laughs> you are most kind, Lord Lama. Tell me, your home is in Hong Kong, Madam Oh, yes. I have a small antique shop here. I will be honored should you care to visit it. I'd be pleased to do so if I have time before my return. Oh, then you will not be long in China? Well, that's difficult to say just now. Oh, perhaps you do not care to discuss your mission, Lord Lama. <laughs> Madam Ming... It is written that silence is the only true friend of discretion. Uh, it is also written that the unspoken word watches over the hidden action. Hong Kong, my lama, is a strange city. Even the green lama should think carefully of its dangers. Oh? Hong Kong is filled with looting and the spoils of robbery. And these things, my lama, might add up to murder. <laughs> Couldn't you come? Rita, Rita Randall. Only a much more grown up and a more beautiful Rita than I knew years ago. We'll talk later. I have a cab waiting. Come quickly. Please. Yes, of course. Don't you think you might begin to explain more fully why you brought me here? I told you over the phone, Jethro. I'm in trouble. I need your help. I... Jethro. What is it, Rita? That, that man coming toward us. Yes? The one I want to talk to you about. I'm uh, going somewhere, Miss Rita Randolph. No, I, I'm trying just... to keep me from seeing you, Miss Randolph. Eh? <laughs> now, you wouldn't do that to your old friend, Toby Holbrook, would you now, Miss Randolph? Please, I... We really must be going. Uh, who is your friend, Miss Randolph? This, this is Mr. Dumont. Dumont. Mr. Dumont, this is Toby Holbrook. 
Now, if you'll excuse Did me... I hear you call him Jethro? Jethro Dumata, the Green Lava. <laughs> What's wrong, Miss Randolph? Are you frightened of something? Mr. Holbrook, I'm sure you'll excuse us. Miss Randolph and I have some important business to discuss. If you say so, Mr. Dumont. Well, you'd better tell that little girlfriend of yours to slow down. By the rate she's going, one of these days she might have a heart attack. <laughs> Well, at least the hotel is cooler than the street. Now, what's the trouble, Rita? It must be pretty serious for you to ask me to come all the way to Hong Kong from New York. Please, come up to my room. I, I don't want to talk here. All right. That man you met, Toby Hosa, I went in business with him. I supplied the money, and he was to supply the brain. Well, he did. He took me for everything. I don't have a dime left. Mm. We were in the exporting business. Exporting Chinese art, particularly jade art, to America. Yeah? Now he claims that the business has failed and that we've lost all of our money. My money. But I have another idea. What is it? This is my room here. I think he not only pocketed my money, but that the whole scheme was one of using it to finance some crooked operation. I see. Well, you still have a lovely suite in one of the best hotels in Hong Kong. I won't have for long. Not after I get to next door. Just a look on the couch. Is he... Is he dead? No, I don't think so. Are you, my friend? No. <sighs> Resting my eyes. Very wise thing to do in Hong Kong. Hello, Rita. Howard, what are you doing here? Waiting for you, my pet. What else? Although you might stock up at a greater bourbon. Also, you might introduce me to your handsome friend. Who is he? My replacement? Yes, sir. This is Howard Stacy, Mr. Dumont. Mr. Stacy? Uh, Howard and I have known each other for some time. What an amusing choice of words. Mr. Dumont, huh? Alias the Green Llama. I suppose you're here because little Rita's in trouble again. Well, she's in trouble because she wouldn't listen to me. Really, Mr. Stacy? And, uh, what did you recommend? She spent all her money buying the finest bourbon for me, of course. If she had followed my advice about not going into business, she wouldn't have run into the curse. Are you still hopping on that superstitious business? What is this about a curse, Mr. Stacy? Didn't she tell you? Oh, of course not. It's Wait a minute, Rita. What about a curse, Mr. Stacy? Well, little Rita loses sight of the important things, Mr. Dumont. When she went into business with Holbrook, their first shipment was a mixed lot of jade curios. Rita had to go down to the ship the day before it sailed and look it over. And she had to decide that one of the items, a pair of jade chopsticks, was something she wanted. She took them home with her. I still don't see what this has to do with a curse. You will. These were jade chopsticks made for Lu Nung Shan Li of the 14th century. He's the old boy who put a curse on everything he owned. Well, let's run along. Look me up sometime, Mr. Dumont, and we'll talk about women and curses. Yes, perhaps I'll do that. Where do I find you? At the Hong Kong Yachting Club, or you'll find me on my yacht. Rita, my love, I'll see you around. Don't pay any attention to him, Jethro. Stacy's a, a playboy, and he likes to pretend that he's interested in things like curses. Still, I think I'd like to hear about the chopsticks that have a curse on them. All right, I took a pair of chopsticks from that first shipment. Why shouldn't I? I was half owner of everything. They were beautiful green jade, and I... I just couldn't resist them. The curse, Rita. Later, I heard about that. It, it's true that a number of strange things happened while I had them. Such as? Well, I thought I was being followed a couple of times. It was probably only robbers. Then someone broke in here once. Where are the chopsticks now? I sold them when I ran out of money. Who bought them? Madam Jade Ming. Oh? She gave me $5,000 for them. I see. And that's all about the chopsticks? Yes. Well, except for the fact that a couple of days after I sold them, someone called me and offered me a, a million dollars for them. Mm. That was probably Stacy's idea of a joke. Yeah. Yes, Quiet, someone's at the door. Yes, sir. It's surely Miss Your old friend, Toby Holbrook. I'll call a doctor. No, it's no use. I just came to tell you, Miss Randolph, the million dollar chopsticks are. Yes, yes, Never mind calling that doctor, Rita. He's dead. In 
in my country, he says, crime is as rare as the snow in August. Yet in Hong Kong, a city of oriental charm and beauty, there was now a murder involving a pair of chopsticks said to be worth one million dollars. While I, Tulku, waited in New York, the Green Lama was facing death and violence in order to help a friend. When Toby Holbrook died in Rita Randall's hotel apartment, the Green Lama telephoned the manager to summon the Hong Kong police. Yet even before they could arrive, a small, round Chinese had rushed to the scene of the crime. I am here, Green Lama, ready to serve you. Who are you? You represent the police? Oh, no, indeed, noble Lama. My name is Liu Bing Ha, Chinese private detective, protector of law and order, uh, Oriental Philip Marlowe, custodian of Chinese paper, Sam State style, at your service. <laughs> then who sent you here, Bing Hao? Liu Bing Hao, also house detective for Royal Guard Hotel. He a manager of phone police come at once. Like American private eye, Liu Bing Hao never sleeps. It's so, it's so, I can't sleep. One moment, reader. Bing Hao, huh? did you see anyone leaving the hotel in a hurry within the past ten minutes? Liu Bing Hao, very shrewd, very astute, very alert. See, no one. Just for this man's eyes. Wait, I reader. See. Someone stabbed Toby Holbrook inside the hotel and within the last ten minutes. Since this man also works as house detective for the hotel, he must know the complete floor plan and would know where a murderer could hide. <laughs> a green llama, very smart, very intelligent. No good detective when he see one. Look, Lou Bing Hao have American-type Hickok wallet without benefit American-type folding money. So, uh, he give you a special fee. One dollar per clue. <laughs> That's very kind of you, but I doubt if it'll be necessary. Tell me... Do you know anything about a pair of chopsticks worth a million dollars? Million dollar chopsticks? These chopsticks belong to Lu Hong Shang Di. Aye, Lu Hong Shang Di. He great philosopher who say that man who commit murder bite off more than he can chew. A very sound proverb. And in this case, I think when we discover why the chopsticks are worth a million dollars, we'll have found the murderer. <laughs> I want to ask you some questions, Madam Ming. Mr. Dumont, please come to my private quarters where we can talk. There's someone there I would like you to meet. This way, please. My most valuable objects are not for the public eye, Mr. Dumont. They are shown only to those who recognize their true value. Ah, here we are, Mr. Dumont. Please step inside. Thank you, Madam Ming. Yes, this is quite a nice place you have here. I see. What do you see, Mr. Green Lama? Well, Mr. Howard Stacy, the young man with the taste for fine bourbon. And I suppose the Green Lama doesn't approve? Mr. Stacy, your habits are of no concern to the Green Lama. I was not aware that you two had met, Mr. Dumont. We met a short while ago, Madam Ming, through a uh, mutual friend. I wasn't aware that Mr. Stacy was interested in antiques. I've always been interested in things of beauty, Dumont. Fine whiskey and fine women, not accepted. Your taste in women is excellent, Stacy. I wonder if it's as keen on the matter of fine chopsticks. Very clever. Except you forget that it was I who told you about the chopsticks. Well, Jade Ming, I think I'll come back and see you sometime when there's not so much company. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Stacy. See you later, Dumont. Well, it seems as though our young friend Stacy takes a decided interest in the community. <laughs> he is quite harmless, noble Lama. But uh, his interest is not in antiques. Oh, what do you mean? He's in love with a Randolph girl. He seeks advice from my humble person. Please be seated, O Lama, there by the window. We shall have tea. I'm afraid I haven't time for that now, Madam Ming. Please call me Jade. In uh, your country, friends are known by their first name, Jethro. Yes. Jade... A man was killed this afternoon. Before he died, he mentioned a pair of chopsticks said to be worth one million dollars. This is the only reason you've come to see me? Rita Randolph sold a valuable pair of chopsticks to you recently. I wonder if I might see them. Can this not wait, my lama? I'd like to look at those chopsticks. Very well. They are solid jade, worth approximately ten thousand dollars. I bought them for five thousand. This is a far cry from one million dollars, is it not, Green Lama? Here you are. See them for yourself. Thank you. Hmm. 
Very unusual. I've never seen chopsticks so large and thick. However, Lu Nung Shang Di was said to be a large, powerful man who had everything made for him of large size. Perhaps this is even true of the legends about him, eh? Tell me, who owns them before Rita Randolph obtained them? In Hong Kong, one no longer asks how priceless objects are obtained, yes, so many strange things take place. Smugglers are as common today as pickpockets used to be. Two ladies on six... But you, Big Now. Oh, Mr. Dorn, why you look at me? What is it? Someone just threw a knife at me through the back window of the shop. Oh, was not I, Noble Lama. Son of many Noble Lama. Uh, was not I, I see no one. Yes, I was afraid of that. Wait. A piece of rope. Oh, heavy rope. Clue, oh, Lama. Uh, lion Alley near the shop window. Yes, but it's not rope. Line, heavy line, the kind used on board a ship. Oh, it's uh, significant, Lama? More than significant. It's but a few inches long, yet long enough, Bing Hao, to hang someone. <laughs> Colonel Trembled Smythe of the Hong Kong Police. Anything I can do for you? Yes, my name is Jethro Dumont. I'm looking for a Miss Rita Randolph. The clerk at her hotel said I'd find her here. Randolph. Hmm, Randolph, Randolph. Name's rather familiar. Rather. Oh, Mr. Dumont, a great lama. At last you come. Yes. Lu Bing Hao. Say, where's Miss Randolph? Uh, this, uh, this is a policeman. He comes to Royal Guard Hotel. He sees a dead body. Uh, he sees Miss Rita and uh, we go to jail. Yes, 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 yes. You know, I remember. Miss Randolph. Yes, she's the one that killed that fellow up in the hotel. Slipped my mind for the moment. The whole thing is quite messy, really, really rather messy. Blood on the carpet and that sort of thing, you know. Then you arrest Miss Randolph for the murder of Toby Holbrook? Oh, well, I had to. He was dead, you know. Uh, Looking how he fired crazy. Defend Miss Rita. The ten men subdue me. I lose. Uh, this uh, Lu Bing Hao fellow has been creating quite a fuss in my station. Uh, we arrested the girl and he insisted on coming along. We can't get rid of him. Colonel, on what grounds are you holding Miss Randolph? What proof is there she killed Holbrook? Proof? Well, the man was in her apartment, wasn't he? I mean, he was dead, wasn't he? Uh, what, what further proof do you need, old boy? Yes. Well, I- I'd like to see her, if I may. Uh, you all had that green llama fellow, aren't you? I thought I'd seen your face before in the papers, what? Right? Hmm. Him, most famous man in the world. Second only to Confucius. Yeah, very well. Well, perhaps you may see her for a moment, but uh, please make it brief. Jail regulations, you know. Uh, this way, please. No, but Green Lama, Lubin hmm. Hao, he's not idle. Well, oh, silly colonel read newspaper, Lubin Hao still keys to jail, see? That's uh, very clever, oh, Lama. <laughs> very clever indeed, Bing Hao. However, I suggest you return them to the colonel's pockets before he finds them missing. You do not want them? No. Were I to steal them and free Miss Randolph, I'd be as guilty of crime as the one I seek. No being how, I do not want them. And I don't think I need them. Well, yeah, here we are. Remember now, just a few moments. Must follow regulations, you know. Uh, here we are. Yes, sir. I prayed you'd find me. Rita, I only have a minute. Now, I need the answer to one question, and you must be honest with me. Yes. All right. Who knew that you took the jade chopsticks... Only, only Captain Jensen. I see. Did he object when you took them? Yes, but not for long. I did have a right to them. Yes, of course. Was your exporting all to be done by Captain Jensen's ship? Yes, we chartered him. Who else was in the business with you and Holbrook? But no one. Why? There must have been somebody else. I... Yes, I believe I know who killed Holbrook and why. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll pay a call on a murderer. Coming, Bing Hao? Um, I think I stay here with Mr. Randolph. Very well, Bing Hao. I'll go to the harbor alone. Good evening, Captain Jensen. Uh, Mr. Dumont, what are you doing here? What do you want? I want a murderer, Captain Jensen. A murderer who killed for a pair of chopsticks worth one million dollars. No, no, no. You don't mean me, Mr. Dumont. I, I had nothing to do with it. I'm innocent. Are you Captain Jensen? 
Toby Holbrook had a partner besides Miss Randall. Uh, I wasn't his partner. I was only hired to ship their exports. You must believe me. And what happened when Rita Randolph took the pair of jade chops? Well, I tried to stop her because I knew that Mr. Holbrook wouldn't like it if uh, anything was missing. And who did you tell that Miss Randolph took the chopsticks? Only Mr. Holbrook, sir. He was very angry. Why? Oh, I don't know, sir. I... I had a feeling, sir, that Mr. Holbrook was engaged in more than just exporting, but that was none of my business, nor were the phone calls he made. What phone calls, Captain? Well, after I told him about the chopsticks. Darkness may protect the strong and fortify the weak, but it will not conceal evil. I see you there in the shadows of the bridge. Om Mani Padme Hum. The Green Lama strikes for justice. Stand back, you idiot. Stand back or I'll kill you. Has he killed Holbrook? Stand back, I say. Your gun's almost empty, Mr. Howard, Stacy. One shot remains. Fire that and you're at my mercy. You asked for it, Dumont. I'll put a bullet in you with pleasure. Now, Mr. Stacy, we're on equal terms. <laughs> this is too many powerful weapons. Dumont, look out of the railing. We'll go over the side. Look out. Uh, Mr. Dumont, Mr. Green Lama, uh, you are right? Yes, I'm all right, Bing Oh, I was very afraid for you. I decided to find you. I know you need help. Mr. Randolph, pay me. You okay? Seems that Mr. Howard Stacy can swim, Lubin. Throw him a line. He's harmless now. Bing Ha! Bing Ha, Mr. Green Lama. Oh, we're very brave. We heroes. We capture murderer. Lu Bing Ha, finish case. We run the fast tower and put it. So there's your man, Colonel Smythe. Howard Stacy would be playboy, smuggler, and murderer. Hmm. Yes, highly irregular, Mr. Dumont. Highly irregular bringing this man here. He, he should have been taken to our major headquarters. Regulations, you know, huh? Uh, however, perhaps we can overlook the... Oh, I say. <laughs> he is wet, isn't he, what? Oh, <laughs> him all wet many ways. <laughs> yeah. You're very well, Mr. Dumont. Uh, we'll accept the prisoner, and uh, naturally, Miss Randolph will be released. Uh, we, we appreciate your assistance, Mr. Dumont. Thank you. Now, if you'd care to come along with me to Madame Ming's, we might look at a rather interesting pair of chopsticks. Ah, oh, welcome back, Jethro. You return to have tea with Jed Ming? No, not this time. Perhaps we can have tea later. Oh. Uh, you know Colonel Smythe? Oh, yes. Yeah, of course, dear lady. Jed Ming. You still have the chopsticks you bought from Rita Randall? Yes, of course. I know you don't wish to part with them, but this time I'm afraid it's necessary. Here's my personal check to cover what you paid for them. May I have the chopsticks, please? I can see that it is urgent, so it shall be as you wish. Here they are, Jesu. Good. Now, I think we'll find that one end of each of these chopsticks will unscrew. There. Hi, oh. Joe. Emeralds. Perch, small emeralds. Yes, from Ludwig Pekin. These emeralds are the reason why the chopsticks were worth a million dollars. That's amazing. Simply amazing. How did you know about the jewels, Jethro? Well, it was partly a guess. But also it was due to the fact that everyone took it for granted that the chopsticks had really belonged to Lu Nung Shang Di and that they shared the curse he put on his possession. Oh. And this is not true? No. No, it isn't, Jade Ming. I looked up the list of possessions left by Lu Nung Shang Di in the illustrated description of ancient jade, the only authentic catalog of Chinese jade. Oh, yes. Shang Di left no jade chopsticks. Therefore, the only alternative was that the chopsticks concealed something. It oh. occurred to me that the exporting business could also make an excellent screen for smuggling more valuable things into America. Oh, yes, but what made you suspect this Stacy fellow? Holbrook had to have a partner who murdered him. Mr. Stacy seemed so interested in the chopsticks. Then, after the attack on me here in Madame Ming's, I found a piece of line in the alley, most often found on yachts. And our Mr. Stacy was the yachtsman. Absolutely amazing. I think it is more than amazing. Jesu, why not stay a while and tell me all about it? Perhaps later. When the duties of the Green Lama are finished, I can return. Which means never. For even I know that the duties of the Green Lama will never be finished as long as there is injustice in the world. Oh, my 
my llama, it is good to have you back from the China Seas. And it's good to be back, Toku. Uh, it's truly written that home always beckons the traveler. So it was said by the great Buddha himself. Uh, I thought perhaps you'd like to see the evening paper, my llama. Oh, thank you, Toku. Hmm. <laughs> oh, those no good nicks. Well, here's an interesting item dated from Hollywood, California. Listen, Tuku. Uh-huh. The La Brea Tar Pits in Hollywood, long famous for having preserved the fossils of prehistoric animals, was today the source of another story. It is being rumored all over the glamour city that a live dinosaur has come out of the pits and is loose in Hollywood. Police and local papers are trying to stem the rising panic. A dinosaur? But this is impossible, Olama. So is Hollywood, Tulku, but it exists. I think we'll look into this dinosaur. Tulku, file this story under the heading of The Last Dinosaur. <laughs> home, Mani Padme, home. The Green Llama strikes for justice. <laughs> The Green Llama, starring Paul Fries, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Tonight's story is by Richard Foster and William Frew. Tulku is played by Ben Wright. Featured in the cast were Georgia Ellis, Paul McVeigh, Lillian Baya, Jack Crucian, Larry Dobkin, and Charles Russell. The special music is by Richard Arant. Next week, at this same time, the Green Llama faces an exciting adventure with The Last Dinosaur. Be with us when... The Green Llama strikes... For justice.